And now for and now for my final thoughts on the Habit Shop A602 3D printer. Would I recommend it? Let me think for a minute. That really depends on how much bullshit you're willing to deal with. Okay? In the plus column, the A602 goes together. Sh Let me rephrase that. Should go together much more easily than the A600 simply because of the way the lower base assembles. You have pre-cut pieces, everything's spaced for you nice and neatly. Uh, the A602 has the built-in LCD controller, which is very handy to have. I mean, really nice to have. Trust me, when you start playing with this, you're going to like it. Um, and it sells for almost exactly the same price as the A600 did several months ago when I bought that one. So for about $360, which is the same price as the A600 was a little while ago, you get this machine that has more capabilities. What don't I like about this was the absence, the complete and utter absence of any pre-testing or quality control before these kits are assembled and shipped out, okay? This is the reason the Chinese have earned, I mean, they have worked very hard to earn the reputation of selling junk. It's because they don't test their stuff. It wouldn't take much to do it correctly. It really wouldn't, okay? Here's the, here's the list of the things that I ran into that I should not have run into on a kit that would be, that was uh, assembled with care. Uh, let's see, the slide rails in the assembly video, the description of the slide rails are for the old style printer, different lengths altogether. The slide rails are these round rails that uh, run up and down for the Z axis, the Y axis, and the X axis. There is only two millimeters difference between the length of the X axis rails and the y-axis rails, and they're real easy to mix up. Like I said, the assembly video is wrong. Refer to the PDF documents for the correct uh, orientation of the length of the rails that you're going to assemble in this kit. The y-axis motor connector interferes with the little triangular brace that mounts the uh, motor to the back of the of the printer. The only way to get around that is to take the y-axis motor and mount it 90 degrees to face the motor connector towards the front so that the connector does not have to interfere with that little brace. If you don't, you'll end up breaking pieces on that brace. The laser cut holes for the stepper motor brackets on the uh, on the frame were so crooked. I'm going to exaggerate with this pencil, okay? This hole was so crooked that the vertical rail literally leaned inward like this so much that the top of the rail touched the lead screw for the stepper motor at the top. If you were to assemble this kit and just try to force that rail back to get it to line up with the top keeper, what, what could happen is you're pr placing so much stress on this bottom piece of plastic, you'd probably break it. This acrylic is very brittle and it breaks easily. Uh, the only way to correct it is to get in there with a round file and file off the left side of the bottom of the hole and the right side of the top of the hole so that you can get the rail 
to lean far enough to the right so that it's actually straight lines up in the keeper at the top without any pretension on this base at the bottom. I was very upset with the, the lack of quality in the in the quality of those laser cut holes. Um, I had to drill a hole in the frame right here for the reset button on the LCD panel because if I didn't when you assemble the panel to the face it's going to depress the reset button and keep it depressed. So not only did you not have the functionality of the reset button, but it would have caused a malfunction of the LCD board if you assembled it and didn't, and didn't provide clearance for the hole. Uh, let's see. I had to repair a broken wire on the PCB cooling fan for the motherboard, for the main PC board. It just broke off of the PC, uh, off of the little PC board in the center of the fan. That was a pain in the neck to fix. The power switch crimp connector, there's a little rocker switch on the back. There are crimp connectors that are pre-assembled to the wires that connect the power switch together. It fell apart. Okay, it was not properly crimped. And if I had gone without, uh, if I hadn't actually accidentally pulled that wire out because it was so loose, had I assembled it later, I could have had problems because of poor electrical contact. So. I had to take it apart, recrimp it, and then of course I didn't trust any of the other crimps, so I went and checked all of the other crimps on the pre-assembled wire harnesses. Turns out they were fine, but that one was not, and uh, it could have caused problems. There were numerous, numerous problems assembling the extruder assembly. The first problem was some people, I won't mention any names, um, got an all metal extruder, meaning there were no plastic parts in it at all. Yours truly got a mix of uh, metal and printed plastic parts. Okay, that's fine. I got pl printed plastic parts, but why so much inconsistency? Why did some people get metal parts and I got plastic parts? I don't know. I would have preferred all metal, wouldn't you? That's Maybe that's just me. I don't know. Uh, the parts do not match. The parts for the pinch roller assembly did not match the assembly video. The parts in the assembly video are from the old style, the A600. The new style has uh, considerably different parts that are assembled. And if you want to use uh, or want to see what the correct parts are, refer to the PDF files. In keeping with that, the STL files that were supplied with the kit on the SD card. Oh, the SD card. I forgot about that. The SD card had a whole bunch of missing, uh, missing directories. So even though they supplied the SD card this time, whereas last time they completely forgot the SD card, uh, they gave me the SD card but only had a few of the necessary files. I had to get those uh, from, the, from the website and have it sent to me by the manufacturer. Um, but anyway, the STL files for the printed plastic parts for the pinch roller assembly? Incorrect. They're the STL files for the A600. Again, I had to contact the manufacturer, ask them to send me the correct STL files, uh, and uh, I now have the correct STL files. If he doesn't continue to supply them with the newer printers that he ships out, I will make them downloadable from altenergy.org. So don't worry, got you covered there. Um, the parts, oh my God, the parts did not fit together properly at all. The holes simply did not line up. I had to grind flat on the round face flange of the stepper motor to get the aluminum block to sit close enough to the center shaft where the holes would actually align somewhat. Okay, But then I had to also widen the distance of the holes in that nozzle assembly to again get them far enough apart so that I could send screws through them uh, straight. The nozzle assembly bolting to the face of the uh, stepper motor does not provide a flat surface. So when you screw it to the J bracket for the for the gantry for the X gantry, the uh, the stepper motor assembly sat crooked, kind of like this. I'm exaggerating, okay but I had to shim the bottom of that little aluminum block 
with Kapton tape, about four or five layers of Kapton tape, in order to get this whole assembly to sit horizontal on the gantry when you screwed it, when you tightened the screws down. <clears throat> there were errors in the wiring diagram. The wiring diagram tells you to assemble the hot, I'm sorry, tells you to assemble the, yes, the hotbed and the nozzle cooling fan a certain way to the terminal blocks on the main PC board. They're reversed. The silk screening on the PC board is the definitive reference. So forget the wiring diagram that they supply when, they, when it comes to the fan and hotbed wiring. They're flipped around. Refer to the silk screening on the board itself. Uh, let's see. After I got all of that together and got the hotbed to heat up and got the fan to work like it's supposed to, the hotbed, I'm sorry, the nozzle would not heat up. And I spent a lot of time troubleshooting why the damn nozzle would not heat up. The problem was the crimp right at the heating element for the nozzle. The wire was crimped so tight that it was cut inside the crimp. So the, the, the wire itself was open circuit when I measured it at the PC board. I had to disassemble this entire wire harness pull the uh, nozzle wire assembly out. I ended up soldering the crimp and, and recrimping it back together, putting the insulator back on, reassembling the whole, uh, the whole cable. Real pain in the neck. Real pain in the neck. Stuff a kit builder should not have to deal with. Again, evidence of absolute zero, zero, got that? Zero quality control. None. Uh, and la last but not least, I pulled out what remains of my hair trying to figure out why the LCD would not read the SD card. Uh, and I spent a lot of time in the firmware trying to figure out, geez, what was I doing wrong in the firmware? Had to be in the firmware. Had to be in the firmware. I played around with the firmware for hours. Turns out I have a second LCD, identical to the one that came supplied with this kit. I bought this separately for the A600, thinking I could get it to work with the A600. Turns out it would not work with the A600, different style altogether uh, to work with the Melzi board. I needed a Payne Lolu, but that's a whole nother story. Uh, but I plugged this LCD into the wire harness here, read the SD card right away. So I knew the problem was someplace in the, in the LCD assembly. I ended up taking the LCD off and I found that the problem was a recessed pin in the slot for the SD card uh, on the LCD that I had to pry out with a paper clip that I pounded flat with a hammer and bent a little angle on it so that I could reach in with my paper clip and grab the, the contact inside the slot that was depressed and not making contact with the SD card pry it out so that it would lift up and, and be level with the rest of the uh, eight other connectors, eight other pins inside that slot. Now it works. Now it works. And I'm happy that it works. It works really well. Okay? But again, evidence of absolutely no quality control. This was not tested before it went out. Couldn't possibly have been tested before it went out, because if it were, it would have been evidence that uh, there was a problem. To be quite honest, I've had so many problems with parts that were supplied with this kit. I'm almost wondering if they decided to put together a whole kit of all the stuff that they couldn't get it to work and send it off to Z to see if he can get it to work. Well, I got it to work, but it was a pain in my ass. And uh, for that, have it shop, you get a really bad review for quality control, all right? I'm sorry, but I'm a little annoyed with the quality control. If I was a paying customer for this piece, I would be furious, furious with you as a manufacturer and a supplier. I, I really hope you get your act together because the design is really nice. 
it's really, really nice. If the quality of the assembly was there, this kit would have been so, be so beautiful. I would have been singing your praises. I would have been saying such nice things about your printer. As it is, I can't really recommend it to anyone but a very experienced builder who's willing to deal with a whole lot of bullshit to put it together. And uh, that's basically my review of the Habit Shop A602 3D printer. Uh, just as a uh, addendum, modifications that I made that uh, don't that aren't included with the kit that you will probably want to perform. I added the third linear bearing to the X gantries to uh, to make the uh, make it much more precise eliminate a lot of the lateral movement and the slop that it had. I added a toggle switch and a push button switch to the back of the plastic box that encloses the main PC board. I extended out the little jumper connector inside and I extended out the reset button on the on the PC board to the back of the box so that I don't have to take the cover of the box off every time I want to hit that reset button or every time that I want to change the way I operate the the printer. I can just reach around the back, push the reset button, or flip the toggle switch and life is good. I added a Z-axis rail mount for the Z-axis limit switch instead of fixed mount. I've already discussed that. And of course I added the glass top to the heated bed and the uh, Corian flat surface for the base so that uh, there's no movement on the base. I actually have it hot glued. And that's it. Thank you all for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this review. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to say I enjoyed putting it together. It was, a, it was a struggle to get this together. It's working now. I will probably love it going forward. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was tough. Thank you all for watching. As always, please rate, share, comment, and subscribe to my videos. And peace, everyone.